So maybe you found my channel because I have a classic bus or my discussion about having a Morton building. Beyond those, I have a big interest in history. So just give me a few minutes of your time and maybe you'll find this short uh, history story interesting as well. So in this video, I'm investigating a historic event in the small town of Westfield, New York. So Westfield is located on the western portion of New York State near the shores of Lake Erie. Settlers arrived in 1802 with the town being established in 1828. The biggest development was the introduction of Concord grapes into the region in 1859. So then by 1897, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Charles Welch, which may sound familiar, he popularized pasteurized grape juice and built the world's first large grape juice plant in the town of Westfield. So at that point, the town became known as the grape juice capital of the world. But that's not the history I'm interested in. In October 15, 1860, an 11-year-old girl named Grace Bedell wrote a letter to Lincoln prior to his election, urging him to grow a beard. Uh, Lincoln wrote back to her four days later on October 19th. Uh, in his letter, he made no promises of growing a beard, but not long after, he had done just that. Actually, he was first photographed sporting a sweet goatee, which later gave way to the full beard. So after winning the presidential election, Lincoln boarded a train to take him from Illinois to his inauguration in D.C. The routing of his train took him through Westfield, where it stopped on February 19th, 1861. So there Lincoln addressed the crowd asking to meet Grace, who is now 12. Uh, I guess they had a brief conversation sitting on the steps of the platform of the train station. In 1999, in downtown Westfield, a statue was erected to commemorate this event. But I found one key thing missing from this memorial, and that was any train station or tracks. So then the question became, where did this event actually take place? So a short walk north takes you to the train tracks just north of town. So from this overpass, you can clearly see a train station, so that's a good start. But unfortunately, this station was built in 1904, so over 40 years after the Lincoln event. And it's now part of the National Register of Historic Places. And then just a little further down the tracks to the east, there's another building. And uh, this one is also uh, originally owned by the Lakeshore Michigan Southern Railway, and it's a freight depot. So this building was built at the same time as the station, so it's too new to be part of the Lincoln Bedell story. Uh, and it also sits on the National Registry of Historic Places. Digging around the internet, I found a 1867 map of Westfield, so it captures the town only five years after the event. Looking at the train tracks running north of town here, you can see there are a few buildings that are of interest. Uh, there's a railroad shop, a freight house, an engine house, but I think the best candidate for this is the depot. So the roads of Westfield haven't changed much, if at all, in the last 160 years, so I'm thinking it'd be pretty easy to find this location. So according to the map, the depot is located between West Pearl Street and East Pearl Street. It wouldn't surprise me if the exact placement and number of tracks in this area have changed in all these years, but I'm fairly confident this would have been the general location of the Lincoln Bedell meeting. Ta da! So, honestly, I think it would be kind of neat if there's some sort of marker here to reflect the actual location in addition to the statues that are in town. Another interesting little piece of history is the location of Grace Bedell's house. Turns out she had a short walk with her dad to and from the train station to meet Lincoln. So it's about three blocks away, and that'll take you to 36 Washington Street, where she was living at the time. The house underwent a facelift in the 1960s or 70s, but it still stands today. Cheese. Okay, so... Uh, being a native to Westfield, what did they tell you about your most famous uh, resident, Miss Mary Grace Bedell? Grace Bedell. Grace Bedell, sorry. <laughs> uh, just that uh, when she was here, she saw a campaign poster that uh, had been 
graffitied, in which they'd added a mustache and beard to uh, Mr. Lincoln, who at the time was clean shaven. And uh, she thought that that uh, actually made him look nicer. So she wrote a letter and suggesting that he grow out his facial hair. And I believe it said something to the fact that the women, the wives, will get their husbands to vote for him ah. because he would look more handsome. And then did you have a National Grace Bedell Day where you would all wear beards? No. I didn't really think you should have done that. Um, and then did you have campaigns by students to petition their own fathers to grow beards? Not that I'm aware of. So really you didn't capitalize on this beard <laughs> angle at all. <laughs> so is that why now I have a beard? Uh, no. Is this a subconscious uh, influence by you in your <laughs> native Welsh, uh, Westfieldian uh, upbringing that you're like, every man has to have a beard? No. no. Okay. Um, did you guys celebrate that Grace Bedell went on to form a band called 10,000 Maniacs? <laughs> That's not how that went. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. No, she was also here and famous, right? Grace Bedell and her band. Uh, no. Oh, who was that? That was Natalie Merchant. Ah, and that was, did she petition her father to grow a beard? I mean, we would have to ask her. I believe okay. it. I think she seems like the <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Okay, well, there you go. That is uh, the history of beards in Westfield. <laughs>